Black Film Institute presents the Black Car Speakers Lounge. Hosted by yours truly, Courtney Winston. Join us on our weekly discussions as we interview a host of performers and professionals from the world of entertainment. Follow, like, subscribe. Hey, people, Black Car Speakers Lounge. We are live with you Instagram on a Sunday, just after 12 o'clock. I am your moderator and host, Courtney Winston. So we're going to wait for people to come in the room. We're going to wait for people to come in the room. We're also recording on Zoom. I'm waiting for you to come in the room. That rhymes. I'm a poet, if you didn't know it. And we've got our special guest for this afternoon. We always aim to bring quality. We have a legend in the house today. We have a legend that we will be and are interviewing. And he goes by the name of Kwame. Kwame is gonna give me the proper pronunciation of his beautiful African name. You know, because I do <laughs> not wanna get a mistake on it. I do believe the name Kwame means Saturday, but brother's gonna correct me if I'm wrong. So once again, people, mm -hmm. you are live with us this Sunday afternoon, live via Instagram and social medias. I see Kwame. And we are gonna interview the Young Vic Artistic Director of the beautiful establishment known as the Young Vic, the Young Vic. So we're gonna wait for more people to come in the room. Jonathan's in the building, the actor, bless. Yes, and we see Kwame. We're gonna now join, uh, have our esteemed guest join us today, and we're gonna start the conversation. So welcome to Black Cast Speakers Lounge. This is how we do. This is how we do. Let me know if you can all hear me, because we know we always had uh, uh, difficulties. Yes, we just have come across a difficulty again. So Kwame, it's, it's, it does this sometimes, where it freezes up and all that. Uh, oh, no, it's all good, King. It's all good. Yeah? It's all good. All right. Yeah, man. So cool. we roll. We give thanks, we give thanks for uh, what's present, and, uh, and we'll wait for it to fix. That's right, my brother. That's right. That's right. Let's go again. Cool. We are live. We are live. We are live on the Instagram. We are live on the Instagram. And today at the Black Car Speakers Lounge this Sunday, we have our very esteemed guest, Kwame, the Young Vic Artistic Director. If you've ever been to the Young Vic, it's awesome. It's had a whole host of shows taking place there. Um, I'm going to let Kwame, you know, speak about Kwame because who knows Kwame better than Kwame? So we have our guest that's going to be joining us. We are thankful that you too, the audience on Instagram is joining us and on Zoom and all other platforms of social media in this time. So my name is Courtney Winston. I'm your moderator and your host. And we aim to bring you quality as we do every Sunday. So we are live right now and we're just going to wait for our friend Kwame to join in onto the Instagram again. I'm, I'm tr just so you know, it just keeps saying, yeah. uh, we're having yeah. trouble with loading this live video. Right. Try again later. Right. So, uh, mm -hmm. and we'll go back. And yes, I'm going to try again. Yes, sir. And you're live. Yeah, you're, in. Awesome. you're in, you're in, you Awesome, awesome. We are in the building. Uh, the mm -hmm. Got you. Send request. Got you. And tell me when you got me. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. It keeps it keeps dropping out. Mm. I don't know why it keeps doing that. Okay, well, I'll, I'll try it one more time. And if again, we'll just if it doesn't work on this one, then we'll go again, brother. I don't know why it's doing that. So you you saw me uh, you saw me try request to come in, right? Yes, sir. All right. So I've just sent a message, and did you get that? I got that message definitely. Um, so. And it's saying no sound. No sound. Oh, right. No, no. That's what someone has just written in and said no sound. Okay. So I'm going to come out and I'm going to come back in again, yeah? Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Yes, sir. And bam. Let's try okay. that again. Send a request. Request. Okay. Let me get on this live. This hopefully will work this time. 
Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome to Black Car Speakers Lounge on a Sunday. I'm your moderator and your host, Courtney Winston, as usual. And we have a very special guest, Mr. Kwame, the young Vic Artistic Director, who is going to be joining us in the house very shortly on the gram, on the social medias, on the Zoom, on the YouTube. Welcome, welcome to Black Car Speakers Lounge on a Sunday. I'm your moderator and your host, Courtney Winston, as usual. Sending requests again, sir. Right. Said in the crest, and there we go. Here we go. Uh, young artistic director who's going to be joining us in our house. Yeah, we're in. yes, on the gram, on the social medias. Awesome, 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 awesome. awesome. Right, I'm just gonna have to turn down one of these just to get the technicalities. How you doing, brother Kwame? I'm good, you know, King. I'm, I, I give thanks and praises for each new day. Good the only problem I got, right? The mm -hmm. only problem I got is who do I look at? Do I look at you <laughs> via my phone or do I look at you via my, uh, my, my computer? What, which think, one should I do, King? I think we could like alternate, but definitely our phone. I, I've kind of put mine near my camera phone on the actual uh, laptop itself. Um, right. I think, yeah. We, right. Well, we, that's, we, that's we, that's we, that's what I'm going to do. This is my yes, eyeline yes. to you on the phone. This is my eyeline like. to you on the computer. We got screen it. Screen acting. All screen acting. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you feeling today? How are you feeling? Well, you know, again, brother, I'm, 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 I'm blessed. I give thanks and praises. It's another day. I give thanks and praises for my family. And, uh, you know, we're amid a mad and a crazy time. Mm. Our ancestors have lived through worse. And, That's right. Uh, and, and found a way to survive. And so, you know, Again, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed that you would ask me to join you today. Oh, and it's a blessing to have you. Bless us with your presence, Kwame. We're really blessed to have you at the Black Car Speakers Lounge at Black Film Institute. So, Kwame, where do I start, man? You, you're a legend in the business, man. And you know, I grew up watching you on the TV. You know, um, I grew up watching you on the BBC, and it's been a joy to watch your evolution as an actor. As a screenplay writer, playwright, director, producer, I loved uh, One Night in Miami in 2016, which you staged and put together. Uh, I have a lot of friends and colleagues who um, acted in that show. Uh, David Ajala, you know, uh, Chope, Dursri. Dons, Dons, Dons. You're dropping big names, big names in the house. <laughs> Awesome, 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 awesome uh, play awesome. about Muhammad Ali, who now connects with Jim Brown and Sam Cooke having a conversation all on stage. It was awesome, brother. I really love that, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. See that again. That, that, that story um, is something that a lot of people don't know about, the history of um, many of our sports stars and actors in the entertainment world who are using their platform to, to shape change at that time during the civil, civil, civil rights. Civil rights. Mm. Mm. So Kwame, so, tell us how you got started. What, what was the thing that provoked and sparked off the flame to get you involved in arts and to really, yeah, get involved in acting and, and, and to be a playwright? Sir? Great. Well, I'm, I'm not going to bore you with the, with the full length of that story, because we might be here all day. But, but basically, um, I, I wanted to be a singer. Yes. And my, uh, my mother sent me to a stage school. Right. I think I'm hearing a big echo, bro. Yeah, I think it's just on this side. I think it's my feedback. I'll turn it right down. How was that, brother? I, I think that's fine. Yeah, Excellent. I can't hear myself back. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, I, I wanted to be a singer, so my mother sent me to a stage school. When I left stage school, um, you know, really, that's all I ever wanted to be, was a, a singer-musician. But, um, I, you know, I think it's interesting. It's always hard to talk about this, because really, fundamentally, I have always believed, whether I knew it or not, in self-determination. And once I started reading Malcolm X and Marcus Garvey, who began to enshrine that in a, in a philosophy, a philosophy of don't wait on the man to give you something, or the man or the woman to give you something. Um, you know, do it yourself, or do as much as humanly possible. So really, I began to become an actor, but I got frustrated when I was an actor that 
um, that the plays or the work wasn't there that I that I wanted that would express my political views. So I then became a writer, and then as a writer, I got I got quite. Um, frustrated that I had to wait for white directors to direct my work before they would hit the major stages and so I learned to direct and then once I learned to direct I got frustrated with artistic directors because uh, I, I, about what they were programming in relation to black work it was always black trauma or that where you know that we belonged to stories at the very bottom of society. So I got really frustrated with that, and I decided to become an artistic director. And God was good enough that an opportunity came for me to be the artistic director of a festival in Senegal called the Festival of Black Arts and Culture, which invited 52 countries, so the African 50 and others, to come and contribute to the future of Africa. And that was in 2010. And then I got another one in Baltimore in the United States and then the Young Vic. So really my career has been, has been constantly about me wanting to, uh, to control as much as humanly possible the means of production, to control my destiny or the destiny of stories that I wanted to tell. Right, cool, cool. So with, you, 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 you started off, you said Malcolm X, you read the book of Malcolm X by Alex Haley, is that right? That's correct. It's the autobiography of Malcolm X written by Alex Haley. And, and Alex Haley was the uh, brother who wrote the book called Roots as well. Amen. Exactly. And, 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 you know, it's interesting because and, 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 you know, it's interesting I remember because looking and studying into looking Malcolm and X studying is one of my favourite black favorite history, black heroes. history heroes. He personally inspired, he personally inspired me. Inspired I, I didn't know nothing I, I about know Malcolm nothing X, about X Malcolm at all X until I watched the Spike Lee movie, movie of Malcolm X. Of Malcolm X. Amen. Amen. And I was, and I a, was young a young brother on the brother road, on the road of, South of South London, London doing my thing, doing up to no good, good, getting arrested, getting arrested in trouble with, in the, trouble the, police. with the, the police. I had no direction. I, had no direction. I, was, I was, you know, I was you know, in a street organisation or, or gang, you know, and, you know, and you know, I was pretty, you know, pretty much a lost young brother. And when I watched the Spike Lee film of Malcolm X, and I saw his transformation from being a convict to being a reformer and being a a champion, a champion in his community, in his community. I, said, I, said, I want to be I like him, like I want to be just like him. And this is the power of the arts, the man. You, you, you go as a young man to the theater, to the, the film, the uh, 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 cinema, uh, or you watch a television, and things like that can just change your direction. So it's hard for a woman to hear you that you were inspired by Malcolm and or the reading of his biography. You know, well, I, 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 yes, my brother, I, I would say a couple of things on that. Um, yes, a, sir, yes, sir. a um, we live in a world where people communicate negativity very quickly mm. and communicate mm. positivity quite slowly. Uh, and so, uh, you know, when, when, when you when we finish this, send me this recording because I want to send it to Spike Lee, uh, you know, so that he hears you say, um, you know, that Spike's movie of Malcolm X turned yes. your life around. I, I think it's really important to, uh, to, to send that kind of positive message to narrative makers. And my second point, which is related, is that um, I believe military might is magnificently important, but the most powerful tool in the world is the tool of storytelling. We in the arts wield disproportionate power in terms of the stories we tell and the influences that we have on the lives of those who, who interact with those stories. It's why we have a huge responsibility. If most of us, I was speaking to a group of, of American friends last night, very late, and we we're talking about what's happening on the streets of, of America and across the world right now. And, uh, and what became really important for me to articulate, I felt, was what is our complicity as narrative tellers to the demonization of the black male mm. to change him from an aggressive stereotype into an archetype that at a cellular level most people are afraid of which makes it easy to kill you if you dehumanize you i can't tell you the amount of sisters that have spoken to me about going into hospitals and being given less um, less painkillers than their white female counterparts because there is a myth 
that the black woman is stronger, can, in, can take more pain, and so they don't need painkillers. Wow. I cannot tell you the amount of time. These are narratives that we receive from our televisions and our movies and our Insta lives and our YouTube stories. And so ultimately we, the narrative tellers, we, the storytellers, have a responsibility to not demonize ourselves, to not demonize our women. And I, I, I looked at, now, you know, listen, I love me some trap music when it comes to the beat. Right? <laughs> I, I, I'm not gonna lie. I hear that bass rumble and my belly starts to die. Dude, even if I don't understand the word they're saying. I don't, like, I don't understand. I don't understand. Spanish, I don't understand. You know? <laughs> but, but, you know, the, the beat is crazy. But one of the beautiful things about lockdown is that I've been with my 15-year-old, a soon-to-be 15-year-old son, and, um, and we spend some nights just going, I, I like, no, give me the history, son, of the music that you like. And I'm looking at some of those videos, dog, and I'm, and I, you know, I'm, I'm frightened to my core about the portrayal of women. I'm, and I go, if, if a woman only comes over like a booty girl, that only comes over like something that you have a sexual relationship with, then you know, my friend, it's easier to rape her. This it's is easier it. to look at that and go, well, that's the only thing that, that, that's what you are. That's how you, and I know it sounds like an extreme, but we are cellular um, animals. Yeah, and it's yeah. the same with a black male. If you only show us as the thing that you have to supersede, if you only present us as this thing or present ourselves as this thing to be afraid of, this thing for the black woman to have to get over in order to succeed, if we're always in the negative or by majority casting them, we are completed in the murder of our black men. Come on, brother. Teach, bro. So Teach, it becomes bro. really important Actually, that if you're coming into the arts, that you take your responsibility to positively portray. I don't mean I don't mean make it unrealistic. Yes. I don't mean yes. not tell stories that that have. But it's our, our it's our responsibility to seek balance. It is our responsibility to seek the enrichment of our human spirit through the narrative, not just the entertainment value. Every time I see one of those videos, every time I see one of those plays on our stages that has the black male negated, and mostly most people don't even think about it. It just goes into the side. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's what black men do. They beat their wives. That's what black men do. They sell crack. That's what black men do. They leave their children. That's what black men do. What do we think is happening? Oh, when we man. sit and we talk in front of our white peers about our rubbish black dad or our rubbish black lover, what do you think happens? Where do you think it goes? It goes into the heart and the deep subconscious of our white peers and we become easy to negate, easy to kill. Mm. Excuse my rant. But bruh, I feel it. So when you ask me about the responsibility of an artist, when you ask me about why I'm an artist, when you ask me about why I'm an artistic director, I'm an artistic director so that I do not contribute. To that. Baba, I'm an artistic Baba, don't, don't, director. Don't, you're going to make me well up, you know. Bro, you're gonna me well I'm, up, an I'm an artistic director so that I'm a gatekeeper to that. So that when someone comes to me and says, hey, I've got this play that's about that, I say, I'm sorry, it may be brilliant, but I'm not the guy to produce it because I'm not going to perpetuate that. We need more of you, bro. We need more of you, brother. I, I... Well, there are. There are. And that's the myth. Like, we often think that there aren't enough. I'm, I'm, I'm part of a Black ADs network, brother. We wrote a letter to the Secretary of State the other day to say, post-COVID, don't let diversity become this, the stepchild. We are part of the success story of Great Britain. Brother, there were 65 signatories. We are there. I was on a Zoom yesterday with Black authors, 200. Black British or the 200 in that. It's a myth that we're not there. We're there. We're there. We, we're yes. there. Yes. We just have to find the way to get the knee off our neck so that we can absolutely fulfill our potential, serve our communities, and serve the nation, and serve the world. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Amen, bro. I feel like I'm in church right now, bro. For real. I feel like I'm in church right now, bro. Hey, bro I feel... I, I feel like I'm, I, I feel that I'm just letting it all go, bro. <laughs> let it go, bro. That's what Black Car Speakers Lounge is all about. We want you to let it all go. And I'm seeing a lot of hearts and love coming from our listening and watching uh, audience on the Instagram, on the social media. Big up, Neil, a good friend of mine who's just put the fire signs on there. Brother, what you're saying, brother, is so important. And 
Bro, you, you, you just, just a whole heap of questions just coming to my head now, what you're saying, brother. See that, what you said. You had a Zoom with, you are part of an AD, assistant directors, is, is that right? Uh, artistic directors. Artistic, artistic directors, direct, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, network, in terms of, yeah. in this country, because a lot of us, especially uh, as actors of African Caribbean descent, we're looking to America, to our American brothers and sisters, to our American cousins. And we don't realize the diamonds and the gold and the wealth of talent that we got here, the resource that we got here. And I use to, as an actor and a poet myself, I used to believe, oh, well, there's not many black actors out here. Oh, we all want to do gangster roles. And is it me when I walk into the audition room that I feel they're just letting me read for that, those parts? But it's my responsibility that if I know I'm not getting those roles, I've got to write those roles for myself. We have YouTube. We have Vimeo now. We have, people, we have camera phones which are used to make short films. We can create our own festivities. And you're so right. We've got a part that right image of our women, especially Oh my God! Our listen, mothers, our sisters, our daughters. Listen, let me tell you, right? Um, I, you know, and again, chat. You know what? It's Sunday. It's it's the week that it's been. Man, just gonna man, just gonna talk it as oh, I see it. You know, and listen, you know, I, I am a I'm a son of a mother. I am the father of a daughter. I am the brother of a sister. How can I not put their liberation at the core of my freedom? How can I not do that? That is to damn my own family. That which has come from me and that which I have come from. How can I reduce that? Do I want my daughter to walk down the street and be viewed only through the lens of sexuality? Do I want her to only be viewed through the lens of something that you can pass through and then dump? Mm. Let me Brother. tell you something. There, mm. there was a play on at my theatre called Fairview, which was quintessentially about race, which is kind of just saying, do you know what? White community, you need to look at yourself. But black community, you need to self-heal. You need to look at yourself. And you know what? I put that on. I produced that play, brilliantly directed by a black director called uh, Nadia Lachico. And I put that on because of my daughter. Because when I saw the play in New York, I went... This, this, this young woman in the play says, see me for who I am, all of me. Mm. I want that for my daughter. My daughter and I was having those conversations. When I walked down the street with my sons, I remember when I was young and I was treated like not just a second-class citizen, but mm. a subclass citizen. That if I then put on narratives on my stages that perpetuate that, then I'm encouraging the police to want to brutalize them. I'm encouraging... Amy Cooper, to use their race against them. The thing that's been getting me mad this week. Come on, I'm, come on. I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm fully up and support and send love to those that are marching for George Floyd. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right? I send love and admiration and love. But you know what's really getting me? Mm. What Amy Cooper did to Christian Cooper in Central Park. Yes. She was wrong. She was wrong. He said to her, could you please put your dog on a leash? And she got onto the phone to call the police to come and discipline him, to mm. manners him. Brother, that took me right back to the plantation. Brother. That took me right back to people being whipped for looking at people the wrong way. Jeez. Do you know how many times in my own institutions, and I've run institutions on both sides of the Atlantic, I have been Amy Cooper, where white women have spoken to me in a in a disrespectful manner, in a manner that I would, you wouldn't do that to the previous. In, in, in the States, in America? In the States and in, in London. Wow. Where I've been Amy Cooper, I've been Amy Cooper all my life. And so right now, the, the, the fire of now is not just the extreme of George, but it's the day-to-day -day microaggressions of Amy that we must not forget. Hmm. We must not, that, that, that kind of, we can't let that take a back seat at all. Don't let that take, we can't. It's easy for everybody to go, oh, George, he put his knee on his neck. And you know what? That is disgusting and terrible, but everybody can distance themselves from that. They can go, no, no, I wouldn't do that. Mm. But so many of them put their knee on my neck hmm. by microaggressions that challenge who I am and speak to me in a way as if I'm a child 
when I'm the boss in an environment. Hmm. And, and if people knew the history of Central Park, the history of what we call today New York, which was called New Amsterdam, and the, the slave burial sites there, just like similar to what happened to our ancestors in Tulsa in uh, 1921, 29 years ago. If people knew the history, and, and this is why education and arts, for me, I believe, you know, I, I can't sit down in a classroom and, well, I'm not going to say I can't because that word doesn't exist. But I found it very difficult just to sit in a classroom and just pay attention academically in school. I was always best with English, reciting and reading out because the two right side, left side of the brain have to work together in our educational system so that children of all nations can be engaged fully. And what you said, bro, with those microaggressions, with protecting our black woman, what comes to mind is a quote from Malcolm X that I learned, which uh, set of lightning bulbs in my head. He learned from his teacher. He said, to educate a man is to educate an individual, but to educate a woman is to educate a whole entire nation, black women, white women, Asian women, women of all uh, appearances and colors. So you're right. We need to protect. And it brought me back to what John Boyega said at Hyde Park this week. He said, brothers, we he must said, protect brothers, our must women. Protect and I even women. got into some and debates with brothers. They were saying, oh, why is it always about the why women? About why is it always about the women? And I said to them, who is your mother? Who is your, who is your, your mother? Your mother is there for you. You know? you know what I would say, King? I, I, I would say I don't need to protect the black woman, right? Because mm. in fact, the black woman has been protecting me from time <laughs> memorial. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, like that, the, 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 the truth of the matter is, and that's no criticism of the phrasing, but yeah, I, yeah. you know, but for me, I don't need to protect. What I need to do is uphold her dignity while upholding mine. Love it. Love it. What I need to do is to say to my sisters, I love you. Come on. No matter what skin shade you are, I love you. Yes. Yes. And I see you. And I am of you. And so actually, I'm not protecting you because I'm not stronger because the truth of the matter, structured inequality sometimes has allowed the sister to move ahead of me and the sister has always reached back and held my hand and dragged me forward. True, true, black true. Lives Matter was formed by three black women. That's, that's not atypical, it's typical. Yeah. Yep. The black woman has had to carry us and has had to, and again, had to protect us financially in many times, historically, the Caribbean, Africa, you know, America, and oh, Great oh. Britain. I'm old enough to remember when three out of five young black men who came over with the Rinrush generation were put into schools for the educationally subnormal. Wow. My brother, we got to read our history. We not just got to think about America. We got to look about why a generation of black men were deemed to be uh, not protective of their family. Brother, if you put three out of five into schools for educationally subnormal, and many of the headmasters admitted later that actually they, would, they, they did not deserve to be there. But our parents, my generation of parents, didn't have the, the understanding of how to fight the power, how to fight the structure, so accepted what the white man and woman said. And that's both the white man and the white woman, that what they did to us. And so that meant that a generation of black men, my cousin's age, those who were in their early 60s now, they came in and they left school with not even CSE woodwork because they were put into the sub schools, the schools for the educationally disadvantaged. Okay. And what happened, it meant they came out into a world and it's not like now, you know, where there are multiple professions we can choose. Back yes. then, yes. you couldn't even go into football. There was only one black footballer. You couldn't even say that you was going into music and going to be able to cross under because actually we weren't even in the charts, only Americans were. So actually we were being farmed, my brother. We were being farmed and pushed into a world of hustling and bustling. You economically lynched me by your inaction, the government in action. And then you look at a generation, you go, oh, they were wasters. Well, you're a waster if you didn't do your history, if you didn't do your research to look and understand why a generation or two of black men were set up to fail by the system. And only our sisters actually managed to soothe our hearts and yes, protect yes. us yes, yes. economically at a cost. So that's why, brother, it's, it's not about just protecting our sisters. It's about mm. saying, I see you. I see what you've done. I see what you're doing. Thank yeah, you for yeah. what you're doing.
Mm -hmm. And it's for us to say, we will play our parts in whatever role we have in this family. Mm -hmm. And that's not yeah. to say that we're not, but it is to say that we have traveled a long way, a long way. Yeah. We as black Brits need to understand our history, our specific history. That's right. That's right. Before That's we right. start running down a generation of men who were the ones in the 1980s who were taking the licks from the police on the Brixton riots and the Southall riots and the Birmingham oh, riots and the Liverpool riots and the blah, blah, blah. You know what? It was African Caribbean men who were out there being put into the mental institution, being put into the prisons so that we could stand on their shoulders right now and, and be in the positions that we're in. It's time when we're shouting Black Lives Matter, let us also look back and say Black British Lives Matter. Let's send the love back as well as forward. That's I'm right. sorry, brother. It's Sunday and I'm letting it loose. I've had a hard week. Chuck. <laughs> Bless, bro. Bless um, brother, you know, I, I, I was listening, I, I was to, listening to, a to a fellow, uh, uh, a colleague, uh, uh, by, uh, um, who's in America, Los Angeles, and he was talking about all the riots and the protests that are going forward, uh, taking place, excuse me. Brother, and what you said there is just really struck so many chords in my heart, brother. And what he was saying is, with all the stuff and protests that are taking place around the world, he paid particular attention to the Black British and what was happening here with the public, the British public in general. And he, he, the, the, the words he said to describe was, it's really kicking, it's really kicking off in London, England. They're standing up now. Because still to this day, a lot of our uh, American cousins don't know that Black people exist in England today. To this day, they still don't, you know, oh, you know what? We, we, have, to give all, stuff. Sorry. we yeah. have to give all praises to Idris Elba because Idris Elba was the one that let the overwhelming majority of Black That's America right. know That's that, right. that, so that, that there is such right, a thing exactly. as, as, as the Black British. British. Elba, we got to get, get him up on there one day as well. But, you know, and, you know, carry on, brother. No, 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 please, no, no, please, go ahead. Please, um, go ahead. You know, uh, what, what's interesting, and, and this is, I suppose, partly why I'm... I, I try and be slightly more diplomatic in most of my interviews, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I just try and today, bro, um, today uh, I'm tired. I'm, I'm tired. Of but you know, do you know what I'm, what I'm tired about, bro? Is um, my 15 year old said to me today, Dad, can I go and, and you know, to the demonstration? Mm. And when I was 13 years old, between 12 and 13, you know, I was, I was there when the area that I grew up in, Southwood, um, blew up into an uprising. And, uh, and so I was there through the 80s when Brixton and Tottenham and all of those went off. And brother, I was there in the back end of the 80s when it went off again. Wow. wow. And, and I witnessed it. And brother, I was in Baltimore in 2015 when it went off again. And I've lived through what's, what's going on in America where there are curfews and... and and soldiers on the street. Sus laws, and, yeah. And, yeah. Right, I've, I've, I've lived through, and here I am again, at 53 years old, having to have discussions about uprisings. Hmm. Yeah. And brother, I'm, 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 I'm tired, bro. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm tired, and I hear the energy and the love and the commitment of many of the young who are brilliant, and that gives me, and I go, wow, I remember having this discussion 20 years ago. And, and here, here we are, again, having to talk about racism. As Toni Morrison says, you know, racism is a distraction. Mm. How, much, how much could we achieve if we pull the energy that we have right now of outrage and pain into solving some of the world's big problems? We could, you know. Mm. And, uh, but again, we're here, no fault of our own, yes. crying about about the deeds of of our caucasian brothers and sisters yeah or cousins across the world mm -hmm. and you know and so there's half of me that says i, I just don't want to engage yeah because I, I can't yeah. have them i can't i can't have their deeds dominate my space and then my 15 year old said dad can we go to the march today Remember what we did in Baltimore, can we do it today? 
Wow. And I'm conflicted. Because I look, I, I look, I look at, I look at my son and I know that the, the generation are looking at us subconsciously and going, but you didn't fix it. Oh, that's so deep. You didn't fix it. I'm here. I'm going to have to do it because you didn't fix it. And brother, that's, that's some painful shit. For that, is, that is, bro. It's, 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 it's painful, bro. I'm, I'm, I keep saying it. I'm in my early 50s and I'm having debates about stuff that I had when I was 13. Mm. I want it, Bombo. <laughs> <laughs> now you know. Now, it, now the truth of the matter is, mm. that, you know, you know, we have had. It would be churlish of us and silly to say that there hasn't been great progress, yes. and that many people have done great work in order to allow us to be where we are today. But we're still talking about progress. St still right? talking about the same thing. I'm still same talking thing. about the man and the woman, and you know. I'm, I'm a kind of brother where I, I don't like being dominated in any sphere. I don't, I, I, I don't like it. Yeah. And of course yeah. we have to react. And of course we have to shout and scream. And of course we have to attack structural mm -hmm. inequality. That's the mm -hmm. great thing. There are more of us now who are able to do the battle structurally behind the scenes as well as on the front line. Mm -hmm. And that gives me great joy. But, you know, to still be talking about the white man? Yeah. yeah. And actually, to be talking about the white man and the white woman, because there is also proxy patriarchy. Mm -hmm. What Amy Cooper showed us in the park was she was willing to call her men to discipline the black man. How dare you talk to me? My friend, that's proxy patriarchy. And I see you and I call you for what it is. Come on now. Come on. Pro Proxy patriarchy. Patriarch. I'm going to incorporate into my vocabulary. And you know, you're speaking, you're speaking about the young generation, and a lot of the young ones went out there yesterday. The protests that were taking place up and down this week. Brother, you said something so key in terms of fixing this problem, paving a way for our young ones. And it, it, it almost seems like, again, history is repeating itself. Brother, you don't look. Anything like your age, by the way, I must say. God brother. bless you, brother. Keep saying that, bro. It's been a hard week. I need, and I haven't been to the barber for three months. So keep saying oh, that, bro. My ego needs it. <laughs> this is called the COVID Afro, bro. The COVID yes, Afro. Yes, bro. I don't know what I'm going to call this, though, fam. Just, <laughs> just a mess, bro. But, you know, I was reading something on our history of the East, an East African tribe that fought off the... Um, the colonial powers, the colonial powers during the time of slavery. Time of slavery. And they were called the Fuzzy Wuzzies. And they had their hair grown out. This is where a lot of that dread look, look comes from. That the Afro just having your hair out. If people Google the Fuzzy Wuzzies, you will see that there was a tribe of people that fought off the oppressors and the tyrants at that time. And I believe it was Ethiopia. I can't quite recall right now. But I, I, brother, brother, uh, brother that, that, that is true. Um, but there are many scholars that put Rasta right back to Solomon and yes, yeah. Yeah. you know yeah. what I mean that, 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 that yeah. the locks yeah. that the locks them was really clear what was being chopped off you know what I mean yes. the yeah. locks yes. the yeah. dreadlocks well, not that I'm trying well I think I'm trying yeah. I might as well twist up my head too man I don't know if hey, this, bruh. This, this hey, bruh. Man, 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 man's fighting man's, man's fighting it bro fighting it <laughs> <laughs> but you know my brother I, I would say and, and forgive me you know uh, you know we're living in a, in a also and I, I've been talking a lot about where we find ourselves today. But mm. I also think that we're living in a most magnificent time. Yes, I've never yes, seen yes. a generation as, as, as clued in as this generation of young black youth, both in America, here and in South Africa. Mm. I've never been inspired by the diversity of work that is coming from our souls and being made manifest. You know, black excellence in music has been just, we just know this. Yes, it's just yes. that we understand. But, and, and, and every other music is not only born from ours, but imitates ours, um, you know, over and over again. But, but I'm seeing that excellence in theatre. I'm seeing that excellence in art. I'm seeing that excellence in dance. I'm seeing that excellence in philosophy. I'm seeing that excellence in podcasts. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing it 
right across the spectrum of thought and art. And remember, these two things are the things that define civilization. I am right. seeing black excellence be at the vanguard of artistic expression, hmm. intellectual expression. Malcolm Gladwell, no one can't say he's not one of the biggest, baddest intellectuals yes. in the yes. world today. You know, I can, and I can list Robert Glasper. One Ooh. cannot speak about, about invention in jazz. And not just jazz, you know, but, but, in, but in the holistic expression of African musicality and spirit, it is both intellectual and an oral. Yeah. Brother, I, I, as, I, as I look around and I see the magnificence that is coming from, from us right here and now, brother, that's the thing that's pushing me up when the pressure is pulling me down. Come on, brother. And this is a great, it's a great but dreadful day. And it, there's a lot of dreadful things taking place, but there's a lot of, there's, it's, it's a whole new shift taking place right now. People are communicating more. Uh, you'll see people becoming more politically aware now, more interested in their history. Um, I saw a program the other day briefly with my mother on Channel 5 about the Windrush generation. Malcolm X coming. A lot of people don't, didn't realize Malcolm X Came to Birmingham, the Midlands. Birmingham, yes. He stood there, bro. Birmingham, Oxford, Notting Hill. Not Malcolm. Did, Malcolm did a tour when he was here. Wow. A lot of us don't know that. A lot of us. Brother, you got go online, go online and watch Malcolm X at the Oxford Union, either Oxford or Cambridge Union. Brother, just go online and and, and just 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 check it out, bro. Oxford, I mean, yeah. when my man gets in there, it's yep. it's, it's a murder. And while you're there, check out uh, James Baldwin in a similar uh, environment. Um, bro, you know, the, our, our cousins from the United States came here and exchanged with us. And why? Because they understood diaspora. And that is our secret weapon, diaspora. Is that I'm, I grew up in an African Caribbean household, but it meant that my auntie was Nigerian. And so I, could, I knew where I could go to and stay when I was in Niger. I had family in Trinidad, had family in, Gren in of course, Grenada. I had in Barbados. I had in America. I had in Canada. All around the world, I was writing letters from my parents to my family all around the world. I grew up understanding that I'm part of a diaspora. Come on. I'm not just a singular. It's why don't ever call me Bame or Bama. Oh, oh. Don't oh. ever do that to me. Don't give because me Because that is to oh. limit me oh. geographically to here. And brother, I'm a diaspora. We're international citizens. I'm not part <coughs> of the global minority. We are if, the I majority. Come, if it comes to melanin, I'm part of the global majority. Majority. We're flexing today, bro. Come on. Come. So when you call me a Bama, Somebody actually called me that something the other day. Someone said, you know, as a Bain person, I was like, bro, I don't know what you're talking about. And I didn't want to be rude. I, I, I really, I don't know what you're talking about. Come on. We know that the word black is a political construction. We know that the word Africa comes from Africanus. Uh, mm. we, we, we know all of these. So actually, if we want to get to the root, we could speak about Nubia. We could speak about Kemet, names that we, that we called ourselves and we generated ourselves. But in this context, Call me black and understand that if you were not on the auction block, you're not black today. <laughs> if you were not sold on the auction block, you're not black. We can, we, can, we, can, we can sit with each other as allies. I learned so much from the white feminist movement. And the way they negotiated with their own men, the way they negotiated power, the way that they had to make themselves smaller, sometimes in order to survive the, the psychic tax right. on women and i'm doing white women well black women don't even go there on <laughs> white women in the corporate environment brother i looked at them when i see when i'm on a board meeting and i see a white woman of a certain age i know they have to work twice if not three times harder than their white middle class yeah. peer to get there and i'm interested as an ally in how you did that mm. what the cost was so i can bring that home and discuss that with my family so i believe in allies my brown brothers and sisters, they're my allies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My East Asian brothers and sisters, they're my allies. That's right. But I'm really clear about who I am. 
Because when I lived in India for six months, nobody called me, nobody called me brother. I worked in China. I worked, brother, I've been to Sri Lanka, like many of us. I've been around the world and I'm really clear that I have to be, I, I, I have to know who I am, not just in this geographic sphere, mm. but globally. And if I don't do that, I leave myself open to exploitation because the truth of the matter is it's so much easier for the status quo to just lump us all in as one thing together. Bema. Do you know what the R is on Bema? Refugee. So all of a sudden, if we're talking about, um, about a financial dispensation for Bema people, it means that my Windrush story, who've been here for 60, 70 years, is the same as someone who's just arrived. I support my refugee brothers and sisters. I'm with you, but it doesn't mean that we are the same. So don't ever call me Bema or Bane. This right here, what we're doing is, a, what, what we're fighting on the streets today is a black struggle. Come on. The people Come were there, you know, and you know, it's a similar thing, brother, and forgive me. I remember when the brown brother became public enemy number one and superseded the black brother when quote unquote terrorism um, became the thing that everybody, and you know, I used to drive past police speaking to Brown brothers, young men, and I'd pull my car over and I'd wait for the policeman to go. And then I'd go and speak to those brothers because I'd be like, brother, I know what you're going through right now as a 15 year old. I know the heart, that, that the pain that is in your heart right now. And what you've got to do is take that fuel and in make yourself the best that you can be. Don't let it turn you to destruction. I used to do that all of the time. Why? Because I'm an ally of my brown brother. I'm not experiencing what my brown brother's experiencing at the airports. Mm -hmm. I used to be from my sin. Yeah. I the flyer, right? When my, I see my, my brown brothers, their heart rate goes, <laughs> goes up no, when, they're, when they're flying. I experienced it because my name's, one of my names is a Muslim name, you know, and you know, when I go through the airport, especially America, Homeland Security, could you come over here, please? Uh, can you tell us why you're in the United States of America? And I'm like, well, I'm here, I'm an actor. And I, oh, you're an actor. All of a sudden, that just gives you a little bit more higher, you know, they like you now. Oh, you, you've been in this film or that film. They like you now. But because I've, got a Muslim, I've been blessed with a Muslim name, I uh, I have had difficulty going into America, but I get in with no problem. But when I go to Asia, you know, or Africa, it's like, welcome, welcome, brother. You have Muslim men, welcome. So, it, you know, that our brown brothers and sisters, just for wearing their uh, jab and the Muslim cultural garb, they just get looked. I mean, there was a time, remember, if they wore rocks like and got on the underground or had a beard, then, oh, it could be this and it could be that. Media has done all these things. I said to myself, media has done this just with the television, just with the... Just with the just the news alone is so powerful, you know. Um, you can put out images and you can literally control the minds of people, you know. Brother, if I, if brother, no, 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 not sorry, sorry to cut you, brother. That's absolute truth. We actually learn about our neighbors not necessarily through integration but through media and the medium of the art. If I say to you now. I don't know, I'm going to pull Sri Lanka out. Yes. And I go, yes. what do you know about Sri Lanka? Well, actually, you're probably going to start going, unless you've visited it, you're probably in your brain going to go through the television narratives that have taken you to that country. If I say Mongolia, you're probably going through the narratives that have taken you through that yeah. place. And actually, one of my things I was speaking to my American colleagues about yesterday is that America is magnificently uh, segregated. It, in terms of work practices, it's miles ahead. It is a much bigger black middle class. Uh, the infrastructure is serviced by, by African Americans in a, in, in a much greater way than it is here. But actually, though they integrate at work, they don't integrate at home. They go back to their community, the black community, the Italian community, true, the Chinese true, community. True, the true, true, true. So actually, the only way they learn about what's happening in the black home or the Asian home is through television. And it comes back to my original point, which means that we, the storytellers, the narrative creators, we have the greatest power in the world. It is the power 
to shape perception. Armies can defeat, armies can kill, armies can protect, but we create perception. And until we handle that, till we understand that and feed that back in to serve us, we will forever be talking about George Floyd and Amy Cooper. And you know what, brother? I always told people, this, this is not just about George, 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 George Floyd, it's about George the countless about other names. Other names. Those, names those names we names know, the names, names we don't know. We don't know. We, 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 I've said to so many of our protesters and peaceful marchers, look, you're, 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 we're marching for George Floyd and the nameless and faceless other victims of police brutality, and we are marching against uh, uh, tyranny as well. So I always, because George Floyd, people try to muddy his name in different medias I've seen. And I said, look, we, we, A, it doesn't justify anything what's happened to him. B, we've got to make it about our Sandra Blondes and our Mike Browns and children as well who have been brutalized by the police, by law enforcement officers. And by the way, I, I'm not just saying this, I, 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 I mean it. It's, I have met some very good law enforcement officers, very, those who are really uphold the law, really care about the community, you know? So again, I, I, I would never demonize all of them, but every, all of them. My brother, my brother, and talking about the police and police brutality is tremendously important. Um, as a singular strand in a multiplicity of stories and angles. Because the police, and let, let's be real, they're just the tip of the spear, right? What, what is a police person, man and woman, what are, what are they tasked with? They're tasked with protecting us That's right. That's from right. the things that we fear. And so really, they are us. They are our deep fears, our subconscious and our conscious fears made manifest. So to only think about the police and police brutality, is to be Jedi mind tricked. They are society. They are acting on behalf of society. And so the police will change when society changes. Now, of course, there has to be interventions, but really they are a reflection of our racist state. That's, that's, they are a reflection of the, of the structural inequality. And, and, and forgive me giving a personal anecdotal you know, I, I was young, right? I was 19 and it was silly of me. I, and, you know, a, a friend of mine, he had a white BMW and he was selling it. And so I bought a white BMW. And that's in the days when it was, you know, it was almost illegal to drive our being black, right? Yeah. And I knew that I'd be stopped 50 times a day. And I, you know, I was stopped maybe seven times a week. I'd go to the police station with my producer, maybe, oh, you know, at least, six times a, at least six times a month. You know what I mean? I, I, and they would know me. And they'd be like, yeah, yeah. You know, because I, you know. So, now, of course, I used to get vexed at the time until I realized that the police would see a 19-year-old black male in a white BMW, Series 5 at the time, and they'd be like going, how did he afford that? Because society hasn't allowed black men to legitimately um, be in positions of power where they can afford to have a, a car of that ilk. So therefore, they have to have got it illegally. Therefore, my job is to check out something that I suspect to be illegal. And then they would stop me. The police were not stopping me of their own accord. They were stopping me on behalf of white society and the prejudice and the knee that they had on my neck to structurally disenable me from moving up through society so that I could afford it. Don't get caught in a Jedi mind trick of talking about the police. It's society. Mm. It's structural. It's white supremacy and not white supremacy where they call you nigger, but the white supremacy where things are being discussed in rooms that you did not know existed. Come on, come on, come on, come on. When I was an actor, people used to say to me, you know what, uh, have you ever had racism in, in theater? And I'd probably think about it and I think overt racism, absolutely not, probably not. But the racism was not what I received in the room. It was about what rooms I was not allowed into. Come on, brother. What rooms I didn't, my name wasn't even, or the best of actors were not even considered. Now, we'd make great progress in that regard. Mm. But that's, let's not get caught up in, 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 in distractions. Our fight 
is for structural reform is the pillars of white supremacy to be challenged to the point and often by them so that those pillars turn to pillars of salt love that i love that brother you've got such a way of words brother you know and the structural systemic white supremacy and racism i i heard a subject matter or a question was is racism just as bad as it is in the, U uh, the, USA. Yeah, the USA, is it just as it's bad just here as in the bad. UK? And I said, I, first I said, straight point blank, yes. But what really got on my nerves, got really peed me off. And I was listening to an LBC discussion. The amount of people that were trying to have an authority of what racism is and isn't were people who are non-black. And I'm like, in my head, I want to call in and say, look, if you haven't you have suffered, suffered the racism, racism and you have not you been have a victim, been victim of, of white supremacy, then really you should take a take a back seat and listen to the victims of racism. You can't now tell people who have suffered a, 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 a vicious type of crime how they feel. And this is the arrogance which, in my opinion, comes from white supremacy, where you think, well, no, no, it's all right here, you know, it's okay, the black, brown and black, you're okay, it's not that bad, it's just classism. What would you say to these people, uh, Brother Kwame? Brown, brown, um, apart from some BC and RC. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Um, oh, brother, listen. <laughs> you know, let, let, let me frame it this way. And when I say black, I mean of African diasporic background, right? Sure, Just sure. to be really clear. There was a moment only two years ago where I was the only black artistic director of a major theater in the United States. Two years ago. And then I got the Young Vic, which meant, and I was running two jobs for a moment. And then it meant that I was the only black artistic director of a major theater in the United Kingdom. Which meant I looked around Europe and I didn't see any other black <laughs> directors of artistic institutions, of major artistic institutions. So it meant that at one period of time, I was the only black artistic director of a major institution in the Western Hemisphere. Wow. Now, brother, that's not to self-aggrandize. That is about structural inequality. What, there's only one person that you found fit in order to hold the jewels of culture? Because that's what art and our art institutions are. They are holders of culture. They are one of the pillars of civilization. And so by excluding us from leadership, it meant that you were saying, it's okay for you to do the popular shit because that's mm -hmm. disposable and that'll be gone tomorrow. But the thing that holds us up, mm -hmm. you are not fit to lead. My friend, mm -hmm. that is structural inequality. That's right. that's right. My friend, that is white supremacy. That is subconscious white supremacy mm -hmm. without it having to come out and call me nigger. Hmm. Hmm. So hmm. when I hear some, again, nonsense talk about looking at reverse racism or looking at, at blah, 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 I, 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 I you know, I, I, my heart sinks hmm. and I try to not give it, um, I try to not tax myself because yeah. Yeah. I need to be thinking about how I can empower myself to fulfill my potential. How? at the age that I am now, that I can, that I can create legacy. Mm -hmm. I don't mean legacy, my legacy, but legacy by the people who I give work and the, and the structures that I create within the sphere of my influence. I need to be putting my energy into how I look after me and my family. I need, I need to not be being distracted by people who will never, never hear our truth. And they don't need to, you know? Exactly. They don't need to understand. Not, not everybody to has to agree. To them or anything. We just, yeah. Not everybody has to agree. I just go get on and do my thing, yeah? Exactly, bro. Exactly. Kwame. Your name, Kwame. Now, I've done some research on your name, brother. Tell me if I'm wrong. And I'll pull it out to our audience as well. 
What? Well, first, I'll go with yourself. Kwan, what does your name Kwame mean? Is it is it is is is, is, is Ghanaian? Am I right? Yes, it is Ghanaian, uh, and uh, it is a can to be specific as well. Uh, and it has two meanings. It means born on a Saturday, and also one most ancient. Awesome. And uh, as I get older, I probably won't give the second explanation. <laughs> but as I get more ancient, but uh, but it means both of those things. And uh, and Kwai Ama uh, is born to find a way. Born to find a way, brother. So you 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 went through a process of uh, you changed your name. Yeah. In your own growth and development and evolution, at what? How important is it? Because I was listening to one of your addresses and your speeches about the net, the, the importance of your name and the, and that relating back to, for example, when we watch Roots. And by the way, Roots is not the whole narrative as we know about our black history. That's just a small part. We know that. Um, but you know, in in Roots, it you know is from Kunta Kente to Toby, and and. The, 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 our, the, our, oh, Malcolm the, X, or Malcolm X, or Malcolm, Malcolm, Malcolm X. X. You changed, you changed your name. Was it, was it, what inspired you to do it? Was it just the reading of history, 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 going into, going into looking, at the, looking at the archives of black history? That's it, right? I'm going to change my name from what it was before to what it is today. Again, I come back to the kind of thematic root of our of our conversation, which is that of the artist. Um, the artist that um, it was Alex Haley, yes, um, created two narratives that changed my life: Roots and transcribed the autobiography of Malcolm X. If he had not been there to do those two works, I would still have a European name that was associated with someone who once owned someone in my family. Right. Um, and so after watching Roots at 12, I said to my mother, I'm going to do that. I'm going to trace our ancestry and give us um, our ancestral name or an ancestral name. Um, and, and that was precocious and, and probably I didn't know what I was saying, um, but I was so pained by seeing Kunta being beaten in that episode of Roots. Uh, and then at 19, as I said, I, be, I, I began to read the autobiography of Malcolm X. And, um, and I saw that his life, in the 1940s and 50s was the same as my life in the 1980s in England. And I was just like, wow. And I began to read Marcus Garvey. And as I said, I, I began to understand self-determination as a concept. Mm. And, and what was really important to me was my parents had traveled 4,000 miles to bring me to the first world, to the developed world. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a direct beneficiary of the slave trade because I was born in a land that through the Industrial Revolution, which was funded by the slave trade, had education establishments unmatched in the world, mm. that had riches unmatched in the world, that had an articulated history unmatched in the world. So what was my responsibility when I realized that I am a beneficiary of the slave trade by being born here? Mm -hmm. Well, I wanted to do the same thing that my parents did. I wanted me to be able to look, I wanted my children to be able to look forward. And I felt giving my children the name of, or handing down the name of a former slave master was an act of inferiority. Now, that is not to speak to anybody else who didn't do it. I did it for me, for my spirit, for my soul, for my family. I judge not, nor actually do I care not. I have no, and I just have to say that under like yeah, somebody, like, what you say, you say, I'm carrying a slave master, and, never, and I'm saying, I'm not saying that at all. I'm speaking profoundly about me, but I wanted to hand on a, a, a baton that also did not have to bury itself in looking backwards, but could also go, oh, I know this. I know who my great, great grandfather is. I know where we've come from. Great. Now let's move. Now let's move forward, carrying our culture with us. So that's really why I, I, I reclaimed an ancestral name, as we say in the very good, brother. Brother, you know what? I, I know I'm very aware of Instagram. They don't give you any warning. They just cut you off. So, ha! <laughs> you know, we don't want that to happen. You know, like one of those parts. Oh, as, as I say that, the countdown starts. Oh, my God. 
So I'm going to conclude with you. You're a prophet, brother. I'm going to join you on the other, <laughs> side, the other of side of Instagram. Instagram. So we can so just we take can one just or two take questions that's all right with you, brother. And, um, you know, uh, uh, yeah, because what, yeah, what you said there is really great. So please, everyone, stay tuned on Instagram on the other side as we join with our friend and our guest, Kwame. Now, I don't actually know what you mean on the other side. What am I supposed to do? I'm my own man. I don't know how to do them tech. Right. So um, <laughs> can you hear me, Kwame? Sorry, Kwame. So, great. Kwame. So what do I do now, brother? So we're going to start the um, live again. Uh, live again. Okay, great. And then we and then are going to, um, we're going to conclude because, brother, that was powerful, powerful stuff, man. Powerful, powerful stuff. So um, I need to just, yeah. Okay. Let me just get that together. Sorry, my brother. Brother, powerful. No worry, powerful brother. Stuff, man. Very powerful stuff. And for those that are still in tune with Zoom, we're still here. We're still here. We are oh, yeah, that's true. We've got the Zoom. Yeah, I'm glad you reminded me of that, bro, because uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't have no trousers on. So I might have got up to go in. Don't and... get up. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Next minute, um, YouTube will be saying, oh, we got to take down this video because Kwame hasn't got his trousers on. <laughs> Absolutely. Nah, friend. Nah, oh, friend. man, brother, that was excellent. It's beautiful. So we're going to... You're going to tell me when you're live. Yes, sir. Uh, let's do this here now. Go live. And the people are loving it, brother. They're loving it. You know, um, excellent. So we're live again. We're live again. Uh, without warning, we got cut off by, uh, um, well, we had 20 seconds warning. We got cut off by Instagram, but we're here just to conclude on the other side. Any questions that you got? I saw a few questions floating around. Um, Kwame is going to be rejoining us. We're still here with Kwame on the Zoom. We're still on the Zoom, on the YouTube, on the other social medias. You can tune you know, with um, Kwame, uh, Young Vic again. Artistic Director, and, man. and boy, it was awesome. What what Kwame was saying yes, was yes, awesome. And we are going to conclude on this side of things for the Instagram. We're still in tune with you and the uh, well, YouTube, yeah. and we're going to bring our brother in right now. Without any hesitation to include. We're still on the Zoom. We're still on the YouTube. So, right. And, and yep, we're here. We're here. We're here. Like we're I said, like Kwame, I said, you got kind of cut, cut out there. there. No worries. Uh, apologies apologies for, that. for that. Even though I don't work for Instagram. Great, 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 great stuff great that you've uh, uh, given us. Who's given us a wealth of knowledge and guidance there, man. And all of the things you've been saying, I want to say thank you for all the audience that are listening. Any questions that you have for Kwame? Kwame, young, big artistic director, actor, stage playwright. Come on, let's talk about theatre in terms of. When I go to the theatre the in the West End, the, West End, the, the audiences the are always, always mostly, mostly uh, European, European uh, persuasion. persuasion, you know, yeah. um, even, even when I went to I see went a play called Nine Night, Night. Fantastic, fantastic play, great actors, actors well written, uh, the death of the death, uh, uh, the death of a salesman as well, as well. Uh, I didn't get a chance get to see that, that was great, I heard it was great from reliable sources, thumbs up to that, and obviously that guy in Miami, Elmer's Kitchen as well. Is that right? Did I can answer that, my brother? Yes, sir, you did. Yes, sir. And you, you bro, and I want to say everybody on the uh, social media platform, Kwame is the second, and please correct me if I'm wrong, brother, the second black man in the UK, in Britain, to have a show in the West End. I might frame it another way, brother. I'm, I might frame it as I was... I, no, 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 not at all. And this is the first time that I've said this, so it's going to sound like slightly uh, controversial and, and I apologise for that. But I'm I might argue, bro. I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I might, and again, I don't want it to sound self, uh, you know, I, I, I would certainly, you know what, no, 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 I'm not going to go there. Because you got to open up too much. Yeah, yeah, let's have, let's, let's, let's have. We'll keep that with you, we'll have a private Yeah, bro, yeah, yeah, bro. But I mean, it's taken, it, it shouldn't have, in my, it, it's, it's something to be applauded, in my opinion, to see a brother step up and, you know, put a show on in the West End. And, um, yeah, but 2003, you'd think, man, you know, we should have had a lot more shows before then. But like but you, like you started, you pioneered it. I don't know who the first was to do it, but um, but, um 
we're here now. We're in 2020, brother. And um, I'm not counselling 2020 out. I'm not counselling it out. I'm not counselling it. I'm not counselling it. This is a catalyst for great things to take place. Brother, with the young Vic, are there any courses that our young budding actors can get involved in any courses in terms of directing, writing? Is, what, what's happening with the young Vic right now? I know everything's on lockdown right now, but obviously anything online that they can uh, go and join in? Any advice that you would give young people to get involved with the young Vic yeah. and in acting? And yeah, we, we, we have a really wonderful program called the Director's Program. And, um, and that program looks after maybe a thousand uh, emerging directors um, a week. We have Zooms nearly every day. Um, you just have to go to the website and join up to the director's program. And then you'll be with fellow peers and directors, uh, established directors, teaching, helping, facilitating. There is, uh, so absolutely. And our taking part uh, department is also busy working with the community from uh, playwriting uh, workshops to, yeah, actually we're even part of feeding the local community. Um, so there, there, there's a lot going on. Just go to the website and as a young emerging uh, theatrical practitioner, you'll find that uh, it's free to join and, uh, and, and, and take your pick of the activities that, that suit you. Awesome, my brother. Awesome, awesome. That's the Young Vic, Waterloo. Awesome place. Been there and watched a show called The Most Pro Brothers. Um, the most the that was a few years ago. Went there to watch it. It was a show about uh, five, accused five accused men, black men, who uh, were accused of assaulting a, a white lady back in the yeah, day. Yeah, that was before. Yeah, that was before I got there. And yeah, yeah, yeah. they went on trial. And it, it, the way it was staged in terms of the musicalness of it, it reaffirmed to me, brother. Just thinking on it and reflecting on it, that art, man, is the way forward. Art is the way you can engage young people. Most young people re remember uh, uh, the lyrics from Kano or, 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 or a rapper like Dave, uh, lyrics from that. That's it, the Scottsboro bros. Thank you, the Scottsboro boys. That's it, the Scottsboro boys. Thank you, thank you very much. But as I was saying, most people remember lyrics from their favorite rapper because art has a way of engaging the young mind, you know, and getting you to remember uh, lyrics and words. Well, what, and so forth. While you're there, while you're on that subject, right, there, is two, there, there are two lyrics right now. I'm, I'm not going to try and, uh, and recite them because they're, cause I'm a, a shit rapper. But, um, <laughs> we don't know that, come on. No, but trust me, I know that, man. My family can attest. This is not false modesty. This is for real. But the first is I go back to 1989 and I listened to Public Enemy um, and where they're saying fight the power. Come on. And the other is to listen right now to the black of the berry. Sweet of the juice. Now, bro, let me tell you something right now. When I listen to that lyric, I, uh, I know that art is there to, to heal, to inspire, to... Um, no wonder he won the Pulitzer. The lyrics, I had to break down the lyrics. Mm. And I had to break down, I had to read it and go, huh? How, how, how does anybody write this way? And so, so I, I, I just want to say, listen to the, let, one second, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, no, no, no. Come on, come on, rap, rap. No, 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 no. I'm just going to say, go, 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 go listen to it. Go listen to it. Kendrick Lamar, Kendrick Lamar, the black of the berry. It will talk to you about here and now, even though that came out in uh, 2015. Right. Yeah, sorry, I was trying to find it. I was trying to find the lyrics. Yes, yeah. I can see someone saying, Brother Kendrick, done Kendrick. no. Done no. Someone's calling um, you Quans. Quans, that's your new rapper name. Fire in the booth, baby. <laughs> hey, baby, there ain't no booth in here. <laughs> You don't want to do that, bro. I'm trying to look after myself. I don't want to. I, I, I don't want to disgrace myself in that fashion. <laughs> oh boy, put you on the spot, brother. But I know you're you're a singer as well, so maybe one day we could get you to do some singing, brother. You know. <laughs> I, I I don't know about that either, bro. But uh, you know, I'm there to support the family. You know, in any which way that I can. I hear you, brother. So, Kwan, so, 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 Kwame, if, if you could um, tell us the website again, once of the Young Vic, um, obviously after lockdown, is there any plays coming up that uh, that you would like to push or anything? 
been, um, no, in particular, no, brother, no, brother, we're 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 in we're in you know we're in mothballed. Of course, uh, of course. And uh, and that's and that that's 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 hard. At a time like this, I I serve through my art. Mm -hmm. But at a time like this, I would have been opening the building up on a on a day of demonstration. You know, we would mm -hmm. we would have had artists come through and and fire in that in in that arena. So, you mm -hmm. know, from discussion to art. So it's it's hard to um to to be mothballed at a at a at a time like this. You know, um, it, mm. it, it, it's hard. So um, you know, we're we're busy being in discussion with the government um about when theatres can reopen safely, and whether you know, and when how we can survive in a in a social distanced world. Yes. Which, which, which destroys our economic yeah. model. That doesn't mean that there shouldn't be different economic models, and there can't be different economic models. There absolutely mm. can and, 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 and should, but the one that we have right now, um, it's almost impossible to do social distancing. Mm. But, you know, again, you know, I'm a hardwired optimist. I fundamentally believe that, um, that everybody understands the role that culture plays yes. in yes. healing, in promoting, in, in celebrating, in reflection, and in leading. And so, you know, we, uh, this, this current painful situation we find ourselves in shall yeah. be overcome. Mm. Brother, I salute you, brother. I salute you, I salute you. Mm. Straight there, brother, you know, from Bless the heart. You. You know, I, I know there's a few questions that people had and I don't want to take too much of your time. So I'll at least get at least one question. Someone said something regarding stage and theatre. Um, if anyone's got any quick questions for Kwame before we allow our brother to get on with his days. Had very little rest. He's been on the Zoom. He's been speaking with some ADs, artistic directors. He's doing work, man. He's doing work. So a lot of us, are, some of us are out there speaking and marching and protesting. A lot of us are behind the scenes doing work. You know, you've got the army, you've got the navy, you've got the uh, special forces, you've got the marines, you've got the territorial army, you've got different facets of the army organization. All of us coming together, pulling our resources, doing different things. You know, so um, any questions for our guest today at Black Car Speakers Lounge for our lovely guest, uh, Kwame? I saw some questions, peeps. Hey, listen, y'all. If people ain't got none, you know, I got food to eat. He got food to eat, man. We got Sunday roast to go I, eat right I got, now. I got rice and peas downstairs with some fried plantain, bro. Trust plantain. me. Plantain. Brother, hey, brother, brother. Plantain. One thing, though. Plantain or plantain? Both. <laughs> I say both, 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 both. You know, in my household, we are diasporic. We've got right. Nigeria, right. Ghana, but my Grenada, and Britain. Because she's Jamaican. She's a Latin, Latin. She'll cook me, man. So hey, bro, I say both. I, I'm, I'm happy to say both. You know, we've got to be bi dialectical, bro. <laughs> exactly, bilingual. That's right. That's right, bro. That's right. Oh, um, we have a question for Kwame. What key differences have you? observed in being a creative director in Baltimore and here in London? Great question. Um, you know, very little. The, the funding model is different, to be, to be technical. Mm -hmm. um, in America, you wake up in the morning, the government doesn't support the art. You know, our, our local government in Baltimore actually were very good. They were way ahead of many other states, but um, it was minuscule in comparison to here. Um, having said that, we had to wake up at the beginning of each year and raise maybe seven million by philanthropy. Um, and in this country, I have to raise 1.7 million. And it's as hard to raise a 1.7 million here as it was to raise the six million there. So, um, um, but in terms of the quality of the actors, absolutely the same. In terms of the, the energy and love of the, of, of the rehearsal room, absolutely the same. In terms of the audience, almost the same. Um, so I, 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 very little, actually. Um, and I'm oh, sorry, there's only one other thing is that I, I think that the, the British playwright is used to writing the kind of state of the nation play. We see ourselves, we pride ourselves on speaking governmentally um, or speaking about society through any. And in America, when I was there, um, you would still do it, but you would do it through the citadel of the family. 
it was more family plays. And so uh, that, that was interesting having to um, negotiate my, my mind around how to produce plays that say something, but didn't continually sit within the family context. I see, brother. In terms of the casting, how do you cast people for plays? As, how does it work? Does, is it through, do you prefer, is it like open or is it somewhat uh, exclusive to, to specific agents that you send your casting breakdowns to or you, you spotlight the stage? How, how do you do, uh, reach out to actors? Just, just, just before I say that, I want to say a, a big up to Shireen, who's just come on. I see, you. I, I see you, I love you. <laughs> hey! Um, uh, casting. Well, what, how we do, how we how we do? Uh, we'll we'll work out the play that we want to do. We'll then reach out to a director who vibes with that, and then that director will sit with a casting director, so that we will together find a casting director that works for us both, someone that we trust and someone that they trust and love, and then that casting director will go about uh, bringing those actors to us. So often, actually, sometimes actors make the mistake of sending. Uh, their headshots or messages to artistic directors who do not have casting departments in their building. Right. Because um, actually it becomes really hard. You don't quite know what to do with that other than send it to, a, to your group of casting directors. Because we don't, the only real dance that I have with an actor is I might, an actor might come to me and say, this is the play I want to do. And I'll go, oh, okay. That sits with my agenda as well. Okay. And, um, okay. And so, and so, let's do it. Or I might receive a play and I go, "This would be an excellent vehicle for this actor, be famous or not." Right. Um, but on the whole, most of our relationship um, comes through the, the casting director. Awesome. Well, you know, I've actually got an awesome idea for Malcolm X in a modern day context. You know, and um, I'd don't love... say it on Instagram, bro. Say again. <laughs> don't say it live, bro. <laughs> I've already had people come, you know, people kind of falsely accuse me of teeth in their ideas. I now can't do that with Malcolm X forever. <laughs> we can be like, yeah, no, I heard you. You know, it was on Instagram Live, you know. He stole the idea from the <laughs> brother. <laughs> so recorded. <laughs> we call right, we'll call right. Brother, one of my biggest dreams is definitely, to, I, I've got to do something with that with Malcolm X and, and I have to, I have to do that. If I have to do something, lighten up my skin or put something like to make it a bit more brown or whatever, I need to do something. Cause he has been that person that really triggered me off into using the arts, learning more about my history. And uh, he was just a fine example of a person to turn my life around into living a straight path of a life, you know? And mine. I love, I'm going to say, brother, I, I, I love your narrative, brother. I love your narrative. I wanna, and I want to big you up, brother, for mm. moving from a street organization into the arts mm. and being a, a, an advocate for the arts. Brother, yes, I, 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 I want to I say from my heart to yours, uh, big up. Bless it's so easy, it's, it's so easy to solid, do that. Solid. That's what so we're trying to do at the Black Film Institute, which now you are honorary member of the Black Film Institute collective, all of us coming together. And um, brother, same to you, reflection of you, brother. You've paved the way for many of us, brother. Well, no, not me, but, but, but yeah. remember, and, and big up to 808 Nails, who've just joined. Hey, big up. love you. Girl like a melee, love you. Yes. Um, and the, the, you know, the, it, 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 it's a thing that I was saying earlier on, you know, brother, mm. is that um, am I where I am because of my own brilliance and foresight and magnificence? No, brother. I know what skills I've got, but I know yes. that there were generations before me where people had more skills, but society yeah. didn't let them in. Come on. Society didn't. And so I stand on their shoulders. I stand on the shoulders of the Black Theatre Company, Yvonne Brewster. They're always, you know, I, I stand on their shoulders. Of, in the 1980s, there were more Black Theatre Companies than there are right now. 
And you know, and I, I, I stand on their shoulders, my brother. I didn't break through the glass ceiling. I didn't jump from the ground and smash it. I stood on their shoulders. shoulders. I stood on the sh shoulders of the men and the women who were taking licks on the streets of Brixton and, and Top Step, who actually made society look at itself and say, we've got to give these black people a break. I stand on the shoulders of the street warriors who have gone out there, man, and fought not just the police, but fought institutionalized racism and called them out. And now those people, we don't salute them. We don't call their names. It's like we think it's done, but we did it. Well, I didn't do it, brother. Mm. I just happened to be at the right place at the right time with the right equipment. And so to the ancestors and those who have gone before me and those who are still alive, who are mm. part of building the world so that I can be where I am, I send love and I salute you and I say to the generation, anyone who's listening, who is under my big old age, go on Google and look at black theatre companies of the 1980s and, 90, and 1980s and 90s and 70s. Go and look and research Find those names, find their emails, find their Facebook account, and send them a message and say thank you. Thank oh, come on. Brother, on that note, on that high note, and that note, brother, we have to say thank you to you also for allowing us and giving us your time, brother. Sharing your time, your your energy, your wealth of knowledge with everyone on the gram, everyone on the social media, with Black Car Speakers Lounge here at the Black Film Institute, brother. Brother, I love you, man. I love you with the purest love from the heart. Let's and brother, sending that love right back. Can't express, words can't express the feeling that you've given me, the motivation to go into the next week, to carry on the fight, to carry on, and not just to make this what's happened to George Floyd and many others, not just be reactionary, but we carry on. We build it up now and make it productive. Get this energy and we keep it moving now. Like we've taken the baton from the ancestors, like you said, brother. Amen. We thank, you, thank you, brother. We well, keep bless it moving. You. Thank you, brother. And I, I, I want to say to please all the man and girl that, 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 that came on uh, to hear me ranting. <laughs> I want to say, I want to say big up, big up to all of you. And uh, May, May next week, because it's going to be hard, it's going to get worse. Mm. May, may the all, mm. may the all mm. protect, guide, soothe your hearts, and look after your minds and your spirits. It's going to get hard, family. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I know that the all, our creator, will never let us down. Never. Hmm. Thank you, my brother. Love to you. Bless up, kid. We'll be in touch. Thank you. Thank you very much. Much Bless. love to you, brother. Bless, Bless up. Follow, like, subscribe.